Who's hail, hail, Lion of Judah? Let the lion roar. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah. Let the lion roar, 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 roar. Prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way. Prepare the way of the Lord. O valley, be raised up. O mountains, be made low. O valley, be raised up. O mountains, be made low. Low, low, low. Let the lion roar, roar. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar, hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar, hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar, O valley, be raised up. O mountains, be made low. O valley, be raised up. O mountains, be made low. O valley, be raised up. O mountains, be made low. All right. And now we'll finish with Great How Are You, Lord. I really like this song a lot, too. It's really cool. Um, and we talked about this not too long ago, and, uh, and it says, it's your breath in our lungs, and we pour out our praise and all that. We talked about Yahweh's name meaning breath, and as we breathe, we're basically saying God's name as we just breathe. Right? It's pretty cool. So let's kick this off. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath 
in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. with singing into your core praise great Lord great and mighty to be praised and so you will humble yourself, ourselves in your presence Lord and we lift your name up that you would be with us because we know that you're for us so there's people that we just pray that you would come against the things that try to rob, kill, destroy distract, demean your people, your children. We've entered into your presence so that we can worship, so that we can praise you, so we can give thanks, so we can meet you this morning in a new way, a fresh way. Thank you that the words uh, of our mouth and the meditations of our heart would be pleasing to you this morning, that our intent sometimes unknown, sometimes purposed. God, we pray that your will would be accomplished, that we would seek and find your will, have the courage and the faith, the willingness to work along with you in our own salvation, in the salvation of all the peoples of the planet. So, Lord, we just say thank you this morning. We bless you this morning. And we sing our praise to you this morning. Lion of Judah. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Curtis. That was awesome. A few weeks back, uh, we started a mission project that we had never done before a year ago. We were moved at Memorial Day through Brian Archer's testimony uh, video on Memorial Day, and we started sending packages to our military, and uh, we did that again this year. Our kids and uh, some some people, they, they just filled some box, boxes, and this is a letter to Beautiful Gate 
for uh, the person who orchestrated the sending. Dear members of Beautiful Gate Church, on behalf of Blue Star Families of Central Virginia, I want to thank you for the support of our care package shipment that will take place on November 17, 2022. Your support and contribution of collected items valued at over $275 will help us reach out to our deployed service members serving so far from home. As you can imagine, being separated from those you love is difficult, but even more so during the holiday season. You and your fellow church members will make a difference in the lives of our deployed service members. What a difference it makes in their day to receive a gift from home especially when they're so far from those they hold dear to their hearts. Our shipment in September brought our total care packages shipped over 6,500. That is a lot of smiles. As you know, when a package arrives at a destination, it's not only one person to whom it is addressed that enjoys it. On the average, five or more people share each package. That means your donations included in our care packages will touch the lives of hundreds of service members. Thank you for making this possible. Please be sure and share with your entire church family, especially, especially your children's group. I was delighted to have been able to stop by on a Sunday afternoon, meet the children, talk to them about our military, and pick up many of the donated items. A special thanks to you, Terry Mahan, for her work on this project and her coordination in getting an additional donated items to us. Should you choose to do something like this again, we'd be honored to work with you. May you have a blessed, filled Thanksgiving and Christmas season. I thought it was timely that we could read this on Veterans Day weekend. As many of you know, it was Veterans Day and uh, a day to honor, but for us today, we want to honor uh, our veterans as well. I don't know if you uh, crossed this, came across this on Facebook or your social media, but uh, I've kind of packaged this in my, my uh, mind and heart since uh, October when I saw it, and I wanted to share it on Veterans Day weekend. Captain Kangaroo passed away on January 23rd, 2004, at age 76. Anybody remember Captain Kangaroo? There's a few of you in the house, which is odd because he always looked to be 76. Um, his death reminded me of the following story. Some people have been a bit offended that the actor Lee Marvin is buried in a grave alongside three and four star generals at Arlington National Cemetery. His mar anybody remember Lee Marvin? Okay, he, he does. He was. He was an old, great actor. Anyway, um, his marker gives his name rank private and service USMC, nothing else. Here's a guy who was only famous movie star who served his time. Why the heck does he rate burial with these guys? Well, following is the amazing answer. I always liked Lee Marvin, but didn't know the extent of his core experiences. In a time when many Hollywood stars served their country in the armed forces, often in rear echelon posts where they were carefully protected, only to be trotted out to perform to the cameras in war bond uh, promotion, Lee Marvin was a genuine hero. He won the Navy Cross at Iwo Jima. There is only one higher naval award, the Medal of Honor. If that's a surprising comment on the true character of a man, he credits his sergeant with an even greater show of bravery. Dialogue from The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Any of you remember Johnny Carson? Yeah. Okay, so some of you. It is The Tonight Show, and who hosts is now Jimmy Fallon. Okay, but he was a predecessor. Anyway, he was a guest, and... Johnny said, Lee, I'll bet a lot of people are unaware that you were a Marine in the landing at Iwo Jima, and during that course of that action that you earned the Navy Cross and were severely wounded. Yeah, yeah, I got shot in the bottom, and they gave me the cross for securing a hot spot about halfway up the beach. Bad thing about getting shot up on a mountain is guys getting shot hauling you down. But Johnny, at Iwo, I served under the bravest man I ever knew. We both got the cross on the same day, but he did for his cross 
what he did for his cross made mine look cheap in comparison. That dumb guy actually stood up on Red Beach and directed his troops to move forward and get the hell off the beach. Bullets flying with mortar rounds, landing everywhere, and he stood there as the main target of gunfire so that he could get his men to safety. He did this on more than one occasion because his men's safety was more important than his own life. That sergeant and I have been lifelong friends. When they brought me off the beach, he passed the sergeant and he lit a smoke and passed it on to me. Lying on my belly on the uh, gurney, he said, where'd you get hurt, Lee? Well, Bob, if you make it home before me, tell mom to sell the outhouse. Johnny, I'm not lying. Sergeant Keishan was the bravest man I ever knew. The sergeant's name is Bob Keishan. You and the world know him as Captain Kangaroo. On another note, there was a wimpy little man who just passed away on PBS, gentle and quiet. Mr. Rogers is another of those who you would least suspect of being anything but what he now portrays to our youth. But Mr. Rogers was a U.S. Navy SEAL, combat proven at Vietnam, with over 25 confirmed kills to his name. He wore a long sleeve sweater on TV to cover the many tattoos on his forearm and biceps. He was a master in small arms, hand-to-hand -hand combat, able to disar disarm or kill in a heartbeat. After the war, Mr. Rogers became an ordained Presbyterian minister and therefore a pacifist, vowing to never harm another human and also dedicating the rest of his life to trying to help lead children on the right path in life. He hid away the tattoos in his past life and won our hearts with his quiet wit and charm. America's real heroes don't flaunt what, they, flaunt what they did. They quietly go about their day-to-day -day lives doing what they do best. They earned our respect and the freedoms that we all enjoy. Look around and see if you can find one of those heroes in your midst. Often they're the ones you least suspect but would like to have you on your side if anything happened. Take time to thank anyone that has fought for our freedom. With encouragement, they could be the next Captain Kangaroo or Mr. Rogers. Want to share a video about honoring our vet veterans now? For the freedom you fought for, and the flag you stood for. For the country we cherish, and the people we love. For the bravery you showed, and the fortitude you held. For the days of dedication, and the nights of devotion. For the miles you walked, and the skills you learned. For the months of training, and the years of service. For the memories you carry of the battles you saw. For the legacy of your courage and the honor you deserve. When our nation needed you most, you answered the call. A deep and unshakable sense of allegiance and responsibility. You were bold, you did not hesitate, and you did not walk away. You were gone for holidays and anniversaries and birthdays. Because while we were living in peace and freedom, you were fighting for it. Thank you is not enough. We can't repay you, but we will promise to remember. You are the reason we can sing the land of the free and the home of the brave. You are the heroes among us. You are not forgotten. You are the veterans.
We remember your courage. We honor your sacrifice. And we thank you today. If you're a veteran or served in the military or armed forces, would you please stand this morning? Please head in this direction. We just want to recognize you and ask you to come forward. I don't know if I could say anything more than that video, but we would like to thank you and honor you this morning for your sacrifice, for your service, and uh, how you have blessed us. Would you stand and please give them an applause? Thank you. God bless you this morning. All right, John, it's your turn. <laughs> I could barely get through. Hello? It was on. Hello? There, they'll get it. You guys got it back there. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to be back with y'all after spending some time with my friends in the cube last week. Um, as you know, Halloween was just a couple weeks ago. Um, seeing all the costumes and characters made me think about the different roles we each play in our lives. Uh, all of us fill multiple roles every day. A few easy ones for me would be husband, father, amateur, or hobby farmer, and employee. But all of those are dependent on, but all of those are dependent on who I really am. And I'm not talking about my family or ethnicity or nationality. I'm talking about being a Jesus follower and a son of the one true king. Now the really good, I mean the really cool thing about that is our God is always there to guide me in each of the different roles that I fill. Um, if you think about it, as a husband I can look to Jesus as the bridegroom to the church. He's faithful, loving, and committed. As a parent, I have the perfect parent, our Heavenly Father, as a role model. He loves us so much, he has a perfect plan for us and wants us to live an abundant life. As an amateur farmer, I know that the creator of all living things has entrusted me with some of his creation, and I should do my best to care for them just as God cares for me. And as an employee, I know that Jesus came to earth knowing that it is better to serve than be served. Each day I want to do my best to serve others at my job. All of us in this room know who we are and whose we are, and we also know that whatever we are doing or whatever role we are filling at a certain time, it's an opportunity to get closer to God and show others how amazing he is. So as you go about your life this week, remember that our God is with you. He is for you, and he has shown us how to live, to fill the roles he blessed us with, also, while also glorifying him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day, this church, and for all the blessings you give to us. Father, we all live busy lives, and in this world we fill multiple roles each day. Please help us remember that each role is a blessing and that you have shown us how to best fill each role and live a life to glorify you. Please help us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit as you guide us through this broken world. Father, thank you for today's offering. Please bless it and guide us to use it to make an impact for your kingdom both near and far. Thank you, Father. We love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Hey, everybody.
Well, we began, we began our November series uh, last week, and it's called Thanks Living. And we're talking about living a life of thankfulness for the month of November. And of course, this is the perfect season to do so. Our scripture for this series comes from 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica, and he's telling them, Give thanks in everything, in all things, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. In all things. We're called to be a thankful people, not just at Thanksgiving, Christmas. So last week we talked about Jesus telling his followers in the Gospel of John that he is the light of the world. He said, I am the light of the world. And then Jesus turns around in the Gospel of Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount, and he tells those who follow him that they, we, we are to be the light of the world. We are to let our light shine. So Amy Hall sent me that song we just heard during the offering, Shine on Us, by Josh Wilson, Wilson, because it made her think of that part of the message. And I never heard that song or never heard of Josh, Josh Wilson before, but I had to share it with you this morning. We need Jesus to shine on us more than ever so we can shine. And we do that when we are giving thanks in all things, in every situation. A life of thankfulness blesses God. And then we become a blessing. When we live a life of thankfulness and imitate God's generosity, God is glorified. People are attracted to God through his people. And, and we imitate God and we let our light shine. And when we're grateful in all things, things change circumstances change people change when we live a life of thankfulness we come to understand that living is giving we become generous people generous with our time our talent and our tithes which means resources or money last sunday we were doing our christmas musical practice and charlie was not with us and he runs the booth and the music and the mic and and so Brandon um, Chiesa showed me how to move the mouse, which is a huge undertaking for some uh, someone like me who's very technologically sufficient. And um, uh, just so he showed me how to move the, the um, mouse, and I was serving lunch and getting the drama actors ready and going to do all those things at once. I knew it was going to be a long afternoon. And 10 minutes later, a teenager walked in. She said, I don't have anything to do. I'll just, I'll help. I'll run the booth. I'll do the music. Well, I can't tell you what that meant. But not only did she run the music, she got our brand new lapel microphone sets set up on four actors all by herself and had all the sound running. She used her time and she used her talent to be a blessing. And what happens is that when people who are generous, uh, they also and often don't know that they're such a blessing and that they make such a blessing. Well, today's message is titled, Test Me. And we're going to read from the book of Malachi, which is the last book of the Bible in the Old Testament. We're going to turn to chapter 3, and we're going to jump in at verse 7 through 12. Malachi 3, 7 through 12. You can follow with me on the screen, or if you have your Bible, follow along with me. Maybe I meant 8, sorry. Will anyone rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how are we robbing you? In your tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse so there may be food in my house. And thus put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you an overflowing blessing. 
I will rebuke the locusts for you so that it will not destroy the produce of your soil and your vine in the field shall not be barren, says the Lord of hosts. Then all the nations will count you happy for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. I don't know what you're thinking right now. It could be, uh uh-oh, talking about money today. Here we go. The church is always talking about money. Let me let you in on a little secret. I hate talking about money. I, I hate asking people for money. And our church rarely talks about money. But it's important to teach about money just like we teach about everything else. So this passage we just read in the Bible is actually titled robbing God. That's a pretty strong word, right? But God is telling his people Israel that they're actually robbing him. And the people go, what? What? (laughs) Robbing you? Who? Us? How? How? And God tells them. He says, by not bringing the tithes and the contributions in the storehouse, into the temple, into the house of God, into your place of worship. I have to tell you, I grew up in a Methodist church my entire life. I I knew Jesus almost the second I was born. We were in church every Sunday, in Sunday school every Sunday, and I had my little offering with me every week with a little quarter in it. And as I got older, I understood that my mom made her pledge to the church every year. And as I got older as a teenager, I'd open the bulletin, and you know, there was always the offering, and it would always say tithes and offering. But it wasn't until I returned back to a Baptist church after I took a little detour in my older 20s, and as a 32-year-old woman, I learned what a tithe meant. It means 10% of your earnings, your salary, your income, not your birthday gifts, not your Christmas gifts. And as I kept returning to church every week, I I put a little something in the offering plate every week. And as I was being moved, drawing closer to God, growing, giving my life totally to God, I, I started writing checks every week. Why? Because it's tax deductible and I could keep a record. And so then I heard a sermon about tithe. And of course, I was convicted and wanted to be faithful and obedient. But I calculated what I was giving weekly and what a tithe would be. And there was a very big difference. I knew I couldn't move from tipping to tithing uh, uh, overnight. But I desired to become a follower who was faithful, obedient, and happy to give. So I just increased my giving a little bit more every week, just a little sacrifice every week. And you know what happened? I got there before I knew it. But more importantly, more importantly, everything in my life began to change. My marriage, my family, my priorities, ultimately my entire life. God tells his people in this scripture, test me, go ahead, test me. And this is the only time, the only place in the Bible that God tells his people to test him. In fact, in fact, everywhere else in the Old Testament and the New Testament, in Exodus, Deuteronomy, in 1 John, in every area of the Bible, God repeats over and over, do not put God to the test. Do not put the Lord to the test. Do not test your Lord, your God. Only here in Malachi, the very last book of the Old Testament, God says, test me. Test me in this way. God wants to open the floodgates of heaven to his people. God wants to pour out blessings without measure, scripture says. But something stands in the way. God's people are not being obedient. They're not doing what God required of them. God not only wants his people to bring the tithe, but more importantly, totally surrender themselves to to him, to God. 
God wants his people to give him the rightful place in their lives. Why does God require this kind of giving? Scripture just told us, so there'd be food in my house. Bring in the tithes so there would be food in my house, says the Lord of hosts. What? God is hungry? (laughs) Yes, he's hungry for the love of his people. Hungry for fellowship with his people. Hungry to share his secrets with his people. Hungry for his people to share in his work. Hungry to see his image in his children. God tells his people to test me in this way. Listen to what I require and what I request. That my children obey my commands. And he says, you'll see the result. Floodgates. Protection, provision. Today, God's people still struggle with obeying his commands, giving God first place in our lives. We have difficulty being generous and faithful with our money and our time and our talent. It seems like it's harder than ever now. Wisdom literature tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes, the I cannot be satisfied. (laughs) Have you ever heard that before? The I cannot be satisfied. Just like children, we human beings want whatever we see. We seem to be happy with what we have, with all that we have. If you think about it, that's why malls were created. We, we, uh, we want whatever we see and whatever we have is never enough. So marketers built rows and rows of stores with windows that attract our eye to be tempted, to want, to consume, to have. But they know our eye can never be satisfied. Thanks to COVID, our mall addiction has waned. But something greater now has emerged. We are now addicted and have become consumers and customers to the greatest powerful marketer in all the world. And its name is Amazon. We know it well. We can search and search. We can Google everything. We can surf on the internet for hours and hours on end. And we never have to leave our seats. But then there's too much month at the end of our money. God in our giving gets put on the bottom. We make excuses. We justify putting God last. God would like to tell us a little secret this morning. Everything we have is God's, and he just wants a little back. Why? So there's love and joy and fellowship and hope and healing in the house of the Lord so that the church might open its doors, open them wide into the streets and pour out the blessings of God, not only to the streets, but to the entire world. People who are faithful with their time, their talents, and their tithe make that possible. Let us pray. God, shine on us this morning with your amazing love, your extended grace in our direction your provision protection blessing in our lives your children that we might grow up be fashioned in the likeness of your son and be obedient in all things the little things the big things in all things that you would pour out blessings in our directions not so that we would keep them to ourselves Oh, no, 
Oh, no. That we might be a blessing. That we might serve or go or love or help those who have yet to encounter a supernatural God, King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus. We want to make you famous and we want salvation to come to the entire planet. So Lord, shine on us this morning as we draw close to you. Encourage us that we would not be afraid, that we would step ever closer in your direction, obey all that you say, that, that we might be recipients of your great love, favor, and power. We pray this morning to be your people that love you and put you first in our lives. We pray. Amen. We extend an invitation this morning that if you need encouragement, if you need prayer, we're going to stand and we're going to close and we're going to worship God with all that we are and all that we have, that he'd be glorified and that we would be blessed and ready to carry on. So let's do that this morning and let's praise the Lord, thank him, and if you need prayer, you come forward. Bless the Lord on my soul, oh, on my soul, I'll worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me. Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord on my soul. Oh, on my soul, I'll worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord on my soul, oh, on my soul, I'll worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and forevermore, forevermore. Bless the Lord on my soul, oh, on my soul. I'll worship his holy name. 
sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord on my soul. Oh, on my soul, I'll worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. See, Lord, and just take a few moments if I would just enlist your prayers. Uh, Matt Tardif's uh, aunt, uh, Laura, that we've been praying for for a very long time, passed away this week. And Rebecca, um, her best friend's son, um, passed away. Brother, brother, um, DJ. It is son. Okay. DJ passed away. Elizabeth is her name, Liz. And uh, our beloved Lucy, uh, Terry, went to, uh, to go get her this morning, and she's just under the weather mightily. So just want to enlist prayers for a moment, if you would. Oh, she made it. Well, see, God answers prayer. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> I stand in awe of God, and I pray you too do. So, Lord, we pray for comfort, and we pray for just your presence with those who've lost beloved ones this week, this day, Lord. And we pray your mercy. We pray that your people would undergird them with uh, not words or advice, but just presence, presence of love, presence of support, and presence of hope. We hope in you alone, and we, we pray for these families who continue to, uh, to mourn in such a time as this. So we ask for your absolute protection and provision in their, per, in their direction this morning. And we always pray in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. Well, bless the Lord today. Be blessed today and be a blessing today. God bless you. Have a great